Hey everyone, I want to get straight to a question I get in my uh, in my DMs quite a lot, which is around spermidine and fertility. Um, as you all know, I'm 58, I'll be 59 in a few months, and I was able to conceive my youngest daughter without any assistance whatsoever at age 43. This was something that I was told would be impossible. So around age 37, I was told I had idiopathic infertility. Idiopathic is just a fancy word that means your doctor doesn't know. So it is unexplained infertility. And I have to say that once I was able to put my body back into balance, I was able to fall pregnant without having to look at any ovulation calendars or look at the moon or get any pee sticks out, nothing like that. So I guess the real question is, is it possible even when you are past a particular age to fall pregnant naturally without any kind of interventions like IVF or IUI? Um, and the answer is yes. As a matter of fact, there are several studies that have come out in the last few years showing that a polyamine called spermidine, which you hear me talk about a lot, actually improves fertility in older mice. Uh, they've also shown this in pig, uh, pig cells as well. And what happens is that <clears throat> spermidine, you may remember, actually improves mitochondrial function. So let's think back to high school biology. The mitochondria are the powerhouses of a cell. And guess what? If you're going to make an egg, it's so hard to make. If this egg has got to go from a tiny, tiny cell called an oocyte to become a mature egg, it's got to increase in size by 500 times. So it takes lots of energy. And where does that energy come from? <clears throat> from your mitochondria. So your mitochondria have to function perfectly. They've got to be like a racing engine. And that energy, unfortunately, as we get older, it declines. So the mitochondria begin to um, to not function as well. They need another process called autophagy or autophagy, which is basically the clean out of dysfunctional mitochondria in the cell. So <clears throat> spermidine activates autophagy. It activates mitophagy to get rid of these damaged mitochondria. And then the cells have clean new Ferrari engine type mitochondria that are able to grow that oocyte 500 times into a mature egg. Now this is really exciting because I think that um, women today, there's a trend to have our babies later and uh, freezing our eggs has really been the only way we've been able to do this, but it's extremely costly and it doesn't always work. So this is another option, is using something like spermidine as a way to improve um, oocyte development as well as uh, oocyte quality. And this, there are other studies which also show that spermidine also enhances the development of the embryo. So once the sperm and the egg meet and they begin to divide and grow, that is also enhanced by spermidine as well. In fact, in animal studies, they can show that the mice who are given, these middle-aged mice that are given spermidine are actually able to have larger litters. Not that we want to do that ourselves, but it you know, goes to the point, this stuff actually helps with reproduction. Now, the one caveat that I have is that in a recent nature study out of China, they showed that when they gave the middle-aged mice too much of the synthetic spermidine, that unfortunately it had the opposite effect. It actually impaired fertility. And that is something we don't want. So essentially when you're looking at a synthetic um, molecular mimic of spermidine, which is a natural molecule that we produce in our own bodies and we can get in food, um, everything from fermented soybeans, mushrooms, wheat germ. If we are getting a synthetic chemical, non-natural version of that spermidine, if we happen to take too much, then our fertility is actually impaired. So what is the too high dose? Unfortunately, we don't know. And given that there is a huge amount of variation in metabolism between men and women, between women of a certain age, a certain ethnicity, uh, even among siblings in a family, there can be different rates of metabolism. 
it's very hard to say what the Goldilocks zone of synthetic spermidine is for each woman, but you can increase the amount of food-derived spermidine that you get in your diet. So increasing things like uh, Japanese natto in your diet, increasing plants in your diet, because all plants have spermidine, increasing food-derived supplements in your diet, like primidine, that would also help. So I hope that this video um, gives you some of the, uh, the information and the studies that you might want to show to your fertility doctor if you are considering trying to enhance your chances of having a successful pregnancy after, say, age 37, which is around the time when they say that <clears throat> our mitochondria um, begin to malfunction in our eggs. Any questions, drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them within the next seven days. So I'll take questions within the first seven days.